Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm the producer of Make It Vegan, and thank you so much for joining us for this Make It Vegan Marathon. I've got new episodes coming your way next year, so let me know in the comments down below who you'd like to see on the show and what kinds of foods you want to see veganized. Okay, back to the marathon. I'm not a baker. I'm a lover. How do you pull off a vegan chocolate chip cookie that's going to be as good. The vegan world of baking is mine now. What's up everybody? It's your girl Merle. Today I'm going to be bringing my dear friend Aria onto the show. He has a huge sweet tooth. Specifically, he loves chocolate chip cookies. So today I'm going to go get him and we're going to go and find the best vegan chocolate chip cookie that LA has to offer. And then I'm going to bring him back here to the kitchen and we're going to make our own homemade version. So I'm hoping that I can prove to him that there is a vegan cookie out there in this universe that is just as good, if not better, than the one that he knows and loves. So let's go wrangle Aria. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm a little a little skeptical today. I haven't I, even told you what we're doing. Oh, great. <laughs> You're just skeptical in general of me. You have a huge sweet tooth. This I, I know about you. Yes, I do love sweets. Yeah. I've always loved sweets ever since I was a little, a little boy. I love cookies, I love donuts, love I love boba. croissants, I love boba. Earlier this year, I did train uh, for a video. I did, I did an MMA fight. Uh, you were there, I you remember. saw me shirtless. I saw That's, you get choked out. That body was achieved by avoiding processed sugar for a long time. <laughs> so that was the hardest part? I think it, having a man's arm wrapped around my <laughs> neck was the hardest part, but yeah. I did miss sweets, <laughs> Okay. and I did have cookies for four months. And chocolate chips specifically are, oh thank you. You love chocolate chip cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies. One of my favorite places to get a cookie is actually here in LA. It's a place called Diddy Reese, which has, I think, probably the best cookies I've actually ever had. And I think what I love about cookies really is reflected in the cookies they make. When they're perfectly moist, they're soft, they're tender, they're like little nuggets of I don't like the word choice you have for any of these descriptions. I do. Nuggets and moist? It's disgusting. Mm. And then, just when you're starting to really enjoy the cookie itself, oh, oh, a little delectable surprise in a little bit of chocolate chip. It's like an extra little <laughs> gooey treat. And sometimes when I eat a chocolate chip cookie, I close my eyes, so I don't even know where the chocolate chip is coming from. Like You sit and close your eyes while you're eating chocolate chip mm -hmm. cookies? Wow. But bottom line is, you know how I'm vegan. Are you? I am, yeah. I've tried to get you to dabble a little bit here and there in vegan food, right? Yes, yes, you certainly have. Yeah. I would, I'm very open-minded with the things I eat, but a, a chocolate chip cookie seems tough to me. How do you pull off a, a vegan chocolate chip cookie that's going to be as good as a Diddy Reese cookie. So you don't think that I can find a vegan chocolate chip cookie that's going to make you like it as much? No, as I just think it'll be a challenge for you. Rachel, do you feel like we can veganize this for him so he's going to actually... I think that baked goods are one of the easiest things to veganize. I agree. Really? Well, I'm not intimidated. So I'm going to take you first to an all-vegan bakery and we're going to find a cookie that's as good as what you just described. Correct? Vegan bakery? All vegan. It's good to expand your culinary horizons. You know, I'll do anything for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good sharp turn, eh? <laughs> Great. Good to know. <laughs> Why did you decide to open an all vegan bakery? I had multiple food allergies back in the early 2000s, like gluten, soy, dairy. My main mission at the bakery is to create a place where everyone can go, they don't have to worry about reading labels, and they can just have a fun experience and then be surprised by it later. You think the chocolate chip cookie is one of your best selling items? Yes. I care so much about this recipe because my mom was a chocolate chip cookie maker wow. and all of us were growing up. We were very competitive about our version. So I knew what a perfect chocolate chip cookie tasted like and so I knew I needed to give it everything and I needed this recipe to be perfect before I shared it. How do you make a chocolate chip cookie vegan? The way that I make it is with coconut oil, and I'm sure you're aware that a traditional cookie starts with butter, and the thing that I love about coconut oil is it hardens when it comes below room temperature, and so it has that sort of short bready texture when you bake it. I use fruit purees instead of eggs, a bit of arrowroot to make it chewy, and a garbanzo fava bean flour. The batter can't be too sweet because the chocolate chips really need to be the diva in it. I like and, that. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it has to be a nice balance. A lot of people think that you need eggs or butter or milk chocolate to make delicious baked goods, but there are so many alternatives that are easy to swap in and you're never going to really notice the difference. And when they come out, it's crispy on the edges, chewiness in the center, and within three minutes, it's perfect time to eat it. Yay! Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. I didn't expect so many. They smell. 
This moment is getting a little more okay. intimate than I'd like to see, so maybe we... <laughs> oh my. I really want to swear right now. I don't care, f*** it. <laughs> this is amazing. So good! It's like crispy on the outside, but it's like chewy and moist in the middle. When I came over, I was like, okay, it looks like a cookie. Well, it tastes like one. I was still on the fence before I took the bite out. Uh -huh. Oh, it tastes fantastic. This is way better than I thought it was going to be. You see, this is a problem for me, though, because I don't live in a very vegan-friendly part of town. There's no Aaron McKenna's near me. You're right. You're totally right. It's a great point. So that's why I'm going to take you back to the kitchen. And I'm going to show you. We're going to make our own really good vegan chocolate chip cookie. So that way, if you can't make a trip out to this incredible bakery, you can make it at home. Uh, you you just, can make some for me. You just want some quality time with me. And then you can come over. I'll make some cookies for you. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay, so we got back to the bakery. Is your recipe gonna be better than Aaron McKenna's? I don't know. And then secondly, the fact that you want me to make it, I'm fairly sure these cookies are definitely not gonna be as good as Aaron McKenna's. <laughs> I'm not a baker, I'm a lover. The only time I've seen Arya try to bake, he killed yeast immediately. We tried to make mm -hmm. vegan cinnamon rolls, he stirred it, killed the yeast, never rose. It's still very tasty. But today I want to allow you to f*** this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Don't get jealous. I'm very good friends with Alvin. You know, ah, Alvin, Alvin Zhu. Yeah, he's a tasty producer. Yes. I love Alvin. Making it big. Making it big, always. He but makes big things. Yeah, I know. It's a show on Tasty. Yeah, I know. Oh. I used to be a producer on Tasty. He is the master of chocolate chip cookies. I gotta give it to him. The man, it's almost weird how much he likes chocolate chip cookies. So the secret to his success is brown butter. We can't do that today because it's vegan, right? We're making it vegan. Oh yeah, because butter's from a cow's Correct. teeth. So instead, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be using pecans. Ah, I hate pecans. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna <laughs> let you do the honors. Very important that we do not burn these nuts. So keep your eyes on the prize here, okay? Butter has milk solids in it. Obviously, oil does not. These nuts are gonna bring like a nice nutty flavor that you might be getting for butter if it's ground. Give them a little shake. <laughs> oh, it smells good. So oh, that does smell nice. Okay, we're using coconut oil. Good job. I feel like I'm cooking with yeah, my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> we want to infuse the oil with a nutty flavor. Oh, I can sort of uh, smell that for sure. Wow, look at that. It's getting very brown. Very toasty, very nutty. When it looks like this, we can take it off the heat. <laughs> We're gonna strain it now. Okay, give me that. One thought ahead, and we have a cooled down version of our nutty oil here. That's smart. You're gonna oh. strain the nuts out of the oil. So there's no nuts in my butter. That's right. That makes sense. That's right. Ah, uh, bone of these. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to, this is oil, it's gonna stain my shoe. Uh, That's good enough. Okay, uh, but what about these leftover pecans? This is, a, this is a waste. Folks of the internet, don't waste things. Instead, you could toss these over a salad. If you want to, you can put them straight into the cookie batter. Oh, don't do that. But we want a traditional oh. chocolate chip cookie on mm -hmm. the show, so we're not gonna let the nuts get into the mix. Okay. We're getting closer and closer to the cookie. We've got the brown butter. We have some brown sugar, some granulated sugar, some non-dairy milk. There are many, many ways you can substitute eggs in baking. For instance, Erin McKenna uses a fruit puree. You can use bananas. You can make a flax egg. What's really cool is that all you really need for this recipe is the non-dairy milk. You need to recreate the liquid that you would get from an egg. I'm a baker. <laughs> Five-year-old man. You have done an, a tremendous job, honestly. This is great. Now what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is we're gonna microwave this. We're gonna break the sugars down. They're gonna melt into more of a liquid. So we microwave this. Now you see mm -hmm. the, the sugars have melted down. We have this nice liquidy consistency. And what that's gonna do is just give us a smoother batter. All right, so this is good to go. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna combine our dry ingredients. Ah, this is flour. flour. Yeah, you nailed it. Baking soda and then some salt. All right, <gasps> sift that right in there. Oh, wow. It's like snow, the first snow. Can you please just do this? <laughs> now you get to mix this together. So my only other concern is that when I usually eat these cookies, I, I usually have a little glass of milk with it, but um, if we're going all vegan. There are so many non-dairy milks out there on the market. I've actually tried a couple of these. You know, they're, 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 they're a little too runny. <laughs> they're a little too runny for me. Runny? Milk. I like a little cream. I want it thick. Okay. Yes, yes. I understand, I, I, I. Oh, I know you do. I, oh my God. <laughs> I hear your concerns. If you make a homemade non-dairy milk, it can be a lot creamier. So it's it's more than possible. All right, you've done a lovely job here. Now it's time to add the chocolate. Mm. We got some dark chocolate. I, I would say splurge a little on the dark chocolate. Get some good chocolate. I mean, in my opinion, it's the most important part of the cookie. $10, perhaps. <laughs> sure, maybe. I'm actually confused. Like, doesn't chocolate have milk in it? Those are semi-sweet chunks, okay? Uh -huh. Yes, a lot of semi-sweet chocolate does have milk in it. But if you check the label, some of them don't. So just... 
It's wonderful. Double check. <laughs> and you can find some that is vegan. Okay, you've done a great job. Now we're gonna scoop our dough. Okay. This part's fun. Great. If you want more cookies, you can just have a smaller scoop and then you can have a whole family down here. Now it's time <laughs> for vegan trivia. A 2016 Oxford University study found if everybody adopted a vegan diet, food-related emissions would go down by what percentage by 2050? Let's go with 45%. 70. 70? Mm-hmm. That's rough. I think it's just important to know these things because you don't have to go vegan 100%. Replace your favorite recipe, make it vegan, and you're doing like a little bit of good. Well, I guess that just means I'll have to come over more and make you more vegan food or <laughs> vice versa. Is that the takeaway from that <laughs> harrowing study? <laughs> you know, we gotta do what we can. One track mind. <laughs> so now we're gonna chill these for like 60 minutes so that the flavors can kind of like come together mm -hmm. and then we're just gonna bake them off for 15 minutes. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Look at these cookies. <laughs> that noise made me cough. They look, look good. so good. Look how gooey they look. I know. I know I give you a hard time, mm -hmm. but I've got a little soft spot for you. Uh, since you said you like to have your cookies with milk, <laughs> <laughs> I've been hiding these under there for a little while, but they're fresh. They're fresh. Oh. I made you homemade cashew milk because you like milk with your cookies. That's so sweet. Here's to, to you. Okay. Sure. And veganism. Yes. And Oxford University. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yummy. It's really nice. It's good. It's sweet. It's creamy. Now I think it's time for you to try one of these cookies. So I guess we should share it probably, right? So I'll give you a little... <laughs> you Are you go. kidding me? Okay. <laughs> Ready? Ready? <laughs> oh my god! That's amazing. <laughs> it's crunchy on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's like, the inside's so gooey mm -hmm. and moist. Mm -hmm. And we know how much I want things to be moist. Weird. It's weird, you know, I don't normally like pecans. But like, A, I don't taste the pecans, but almost, I don't know if it's some sort of placebo effect of having known the process we made it in. Mm. I feel like some sort of like a nutty, buttery taste. <laughs> oh, <f> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and when this happens, kids, you know what? It's even better. You can't have too much cashew. <laughs> Oh no. Whose world is it? This is my world! The vegan world of baking is mine now. <laughs> it's the moment of truth. It's the moment of truth. We've got your Diddy Reese cookie. Ah, uh, Diddy. We've got the Aaron McKenna cookie from earlier. And then we've got our cookie, my cookie, uh, the homemade one. I have an attachment to these two, I won't lie. This because we made it together. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. Um, and this one, Diddy Reese is special to me. That's right. You have a relationship mm. with that cookie. This is, this is, this is definitely the, <laughs> the standard I set when it comes to a good. So that's like a 10 for a mm -hmm. cookie for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Then we have, of course, Aaron McKenna's cookie. We had earlier, loved it. I really ate. good. <laughs> I kept eating them. You, I, don't even wanna, when, I don't even know if you're gonna expose how many of these you ate earlier. Even when the camera stopped rolling, I couldn't stop eating them. They were great. Just so chewy. You know, it has like a much crispier texture than this. This one's very doughy almost. Mm -hmm. Well, this one has like a, a, that crispy exterior. It's like it's flaky. For some people, that's like the best part. It's like the whole cookie mm -hmm. is kind of like the edge of the cookie. So that's, yeah. a, that's a choice. And then of course we have this, this beauty, the Merlia cookie, <laughs> you know. Uh, Merlia. I mean, it was- It's so pretty. It, it, is, it is so pretty, just like you. Oh my. You have to pretend like you're not gonna just eat more. It's, I'm, it's just, I'm not gonna say anymore. You're having a fucking laugh with that cookie. You're having a laugh with how good that is. Woo! Oh my God, you're full of surprises at all times. Yeah, the Aaron McKenna one is great. Mm -hmm. um, I will say though that the fact that it's a little, it's, it's not near me, mm. it's, it's a bit of a, I don't really go to that part of town. Not everybody has vegan bakeries available to them Exactly. Either. Whereas on the other end, you know, the Merlia cookie, I mean, it, it was quick to make and it used very simple ingredients. And you don't have any baking experience really, right? Yeah, it's it, pretty easy. Very easy. Anybody can do it. All right, let's go straight. Okay. I'm gonna compare these two obviously because this is just the gold standard. This is a 10. Aaron McKenna's. Great cookie, I'd give it a solid 7.75 out of 10. It's <laughs> very specific. The Merlier cookie, honestly, I'm being completely honest. Please. I'm gonna get, like this is truly, this is a 10.56. No, 10. really? 10.56, it's, I can't, I honestly, it's flawless to me. Vegan or not, it's just a fantastic cookie all around. It's moist, but it's still crispy on the outside. It's an You're obscene mess. amount of chocolate, which is what I love. If you just gave this to me blind, I would absolutely not think it's vegan at all. Really? Absolutely not. I think this is just a great 
a homemade cookie. That is honestly my goal. Because I want people to feel like they don't have to miss out on their favorite things just because they maybe want to go a little more plant-based. And you know what? The fact that this is doing a tiny little bit of good towards helping the world, you know what? Justifies it in my head. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep eating these for the rest of the day. Because I'm helping the planet. Arya, <laughs> I have to ask. Yes. Are you sure you're not just picking my cookie because you have a crush on me? Even if I did, I would absolutely still be picking this cookie because I'm a supportive coworker. <laughs> no, it's a good cookie. It's a fantastic cookie. And also, you do have a crush on me. I mean, I don't know, Earl. You're the one that wrangled me uh, for an entire day to send, spend time making cookies with you. No! Yeah. You just find more excuses to, to be next to me on camera. I get it, I get it. Just so you know, nothing's gonna happen on camera. <laughs> Thank you for spending the day with me. This was quite a treat, as one might say. A real treat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please let me know in the comments below who you'd like me to invite on to veganize something for, or just let me know what you want me to veganize and I'll find someone who loves that thing. She's just secretly hoping that you guys want me back again to no. spend more time making more things with me. I get it. Hey, hey, busy. I always do <laughs> here. 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 We have fun. It's a good time. No. Oh. And cookies. <laughs> if you are what you eat, I was basically just a hunk of meat. <laughs> I didn't give up meat because I didn't like the taste. I used to eat cold spare ribs in the morning. <laughs> and now I'm <laughs> never that. Hello everybody, it's your girl Merle, your friendly neighborhood vegan. Today I'm gonna be bringing my very good friend Alex onto the show. She used to be a tasty producer and she was a huge meat eater. I know her favorite food was always burgers. So I'm gonna take her to go get the best vegan burger that LA has to offer. Then after that, I'm gonna show her how to make a wonderful homemade vegan burger. And then we're gonna see which one she likes the best. I'm gonna go get Alex. Hey everybody. Now we have another thing in common. Alex has been starting to eat a little more plant-based. I vegan. have, like I would say about 98% of Really? Like, I didn't know that much. Like, whenever I cook for myself, I eat completely plant-based. I actually had a kundalini awakening, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it inspired me to start living more ethically, and it just made me a better person, to be honest. You used to be a really big meat eater. I also used to be a really big yeah. meat eater. Tell me a little bit more about that. If you are what you eat, I was basically just a hunk of meat. <laughs> <laughs> I ate so much meat, like every no. meal. I felt like I had to have meat for protein. When this all happened, I was just like, oh, that's actually a lie. There's so many great sources of protein that is vegan. And also, it is so much easier nowadays to eat vegan. There's tons of options. It doesn't have to mean that you like miss out on food or like being indulgent at all. I truly, Alex, no. never, ever, never. ever ever envisioned that you would. But I will also say you seem happier now than I have ever so known much happier. you to be. I have more energy. It just feels really good. So I know back in the meat eating days, mm -hmm. uh, you loved a good burger. I still have a lot of nostalgia for In-N-Out. Just like a simple buttery bun. They have their secret sauce. It's like a thousand island. I would always get a double double so you get two patties on there. I'm taking this burger joint that's like the vegan equivalent to a fast food restaurant. Monty's Good Burger. I Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. I can't take your order. Yeah, well, we're gonna do that. We're gonna <laughs> it's really made for meat loving vegans. Yeah, that's me. You. I didn't give up meat because I didn't like the taste. Like for me, it was right. like, okay, I'm giving this up. Okay. Drying your tears with hamburger yeah, patties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At Monty's, our overall goal is to provide a 100% plant-based menu for everybody, not just plant-based people, and to promote a sustainable lifestyle and eating habits. So why did you choose to use the Impossible Burger? We started using the 2.0 Impossible Patty as soon as it came out. We were one of the first 20 stores to start it. It looks like real meat on the grill. It's got that bloodiness to it. It bleeds like meat. It really does have the same texture and taste. We either have plant-based lovers that come in and are excited to try a burger that really tastes like a burger they love, and then other people that are a little interested and we get to educate them on what's actually really good about having this patty instead of a regular burger. It's about 80% less environmental resources and it tastes so good too. Yeah. <laughs> what is the top selling item? I would have to say you gotta dig a little deeper and get into our secret menu. Ooh, oh my gosh. What? This is like in and out a secret menu. <laughs> yeah, our maxed out fries is pretty cool. But my personal favorite on the menu has gotta be the strawberry shake. It's okay. out of this world. I think what's really awesome about Monty's is that we're not just for vegans. I'm having a menu that's simple and familiar to a lot of people I mean, hamburgers and cheeseburgers are an American favorite. Um, everyone is a lot more enticed to come in and maybe see something that's exciting or different about a plant-based menu and a lifestyle. Let's eat! Let's eat! Oh my god! Ooh. Oh my god, this looks so familiar! 
Oh my god, that looks so good. I'm not even gonna wait. I'm sorry, it's been okay. too long. All right, wait. all right. Oh my god. I didn't leave That's you straight. I know. Like you get the full experience of having a burger, which is what you want. Don't give me any more black bean patties. No, this is delectable. Dangerous. This is like a late night Yeah, how late are you open? 1 a.m. Beautiful. I really do know that this isn't meat, but I feel a little worried that maybe yeah, it like, is. Is this really? What are you doing? Oh, you put the fries in the burger. There's so much to learn. Give it just like an extra crunch. How did I do? That was amazing. Not everybody is fortunate enough to have Monty's like around the corner. No. Yeah. So I'm gonna have you follow me back to the studio and we're gonna try to make a burger ourselves that stacks up to this. Let's see if we can do it. We I can know. We've got some well, high we're... stacks. I know, I'm like this burger. <laughs> can I take a nap first? Because I'm <laughs> pretty full. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna make you the most delicious uh -oh. homemade vegan burger. I don't know. I mean, I just had a pretty damn good burger, so. Okay, I, I brought you to Monty's to give you like a taste. Was it just the appetizer? That's just the appetizer. Okay, this whoa. is gonna be the main course. You've got some big talk, girl. <laughs> so this is a competition. Yikes. Okay, so the key to having that delicious meaty texture you want in a vegan burger is tofu, believe it or not. <laughs> Nothing meatier than tofu. <laughs> Sometimes these things come together to make a beautiful harmony. Okay, I trust you. You're the vegan longer than I. Okay. And that's how that works. If I've been a vegan yeah. longer, I'm a better vegan. It's like the happens. master and the, I'm the cricket. Is the cricket the one that learns? Is that the thing? You are the cricket. So what I'm gonna have you do is crumble up this tofu, like, like a ground beef crumble. Yeah, okay. You know? It does look like a little like ground beefy if it were just a completely different color and maybe smelled completely different and maybe had a little blood in it. Just a couple tweaks. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna freeze it because when we freeze it, the water molecules expand. Well, okay, are we, you Bill Nye, the science guy now? What's going on? <laughs> I'm his niece. <laughs> are you actually? No. Oh, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. And then when we thaw them, that's what's gonna give it that meaty texture that we want. We're gonna freeze this for about six hours. Woo, okay. So hey, we got some time. But luckily we've got a magic freezer. Oh, okay. We also have a little movie magic, you <laughs> movie know what magic. I mean? <laughs> Look wow. at that. It's weird, Look, it like changed color. Oh yeah, this is frozen tofu. Ooh. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this thaw and then we're gonna okay. go make the actual burger patty. Cool. All right, when I'm having a burger, you want it to be really meaty. So mushrooms are your friend. I just have such a special place for mushrooms in my heart because I started learning about them and how smart they are. They're just so smart. They call it like the Earth's internet. They're connected. See? So today you're gonna show your appreciation by grinding them up into a fine paste. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's yeah. what they're meant to do. Sure, so we've got the shiitake mushrooms, we've got some shiitake. walnuts. That's gonna give us the meaty texture. And then we got a little garlic for flavor. Ooh, I love it. Who doesn't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, okay. that's a paste. That's a paste right there. Okay. We're gonna add some fats. Mm -hmm. We've got some vegan butter and we've got some olive oil. If you don't have vegan butter at your disposal, you can just use more olive oil. So we're gonna get our paste in there. Cool, yeah. pasty paste. You're gonna get these nice and crispy. This is kind of like our beef. I'm kind of surprised that it's like crisping up like I know, this. it looks like It uh, does look like ground beef. Yeah, it really it does. does. It does. I'm gonna go ahead and add what we've got here, which is soy sauce. I, I love soy sauce. Same. We got some Worcester sauce, which it's a vegan Worcester sauce, I should say, also. And then we have liquid smoke. A little bit goes a long, a long little, way. Yeah. Oh my God, that smells so good. So we have our little shiitake walnut mixture. We're gonna set this bad boy aside. Yeah. Add some vegan butter and some oil. And Great. The onions, soften them up. Okay, so the tomato paste is also gonna give us that umami flavor that we want. Wow. Looking pretty good. Looks good Smelling from where I'm even standing. better. Oh, yes it does. Now you're gonna scrape our tomato paste onion mixture into the processor and we're gonna add a little bit of brown rice for some body. Okay, and then the most important part of this process. What is it? Beets, beets, baby. So the beets are gonna give us that bloody, yeah. that bloody. So weird, us humans who <laughs> want <laughs> all this bloody stuff. Carry on. Bloody. Yay. Woo. Looking bloody. Wow, it does. So I'm gonna put our mushroom walnut mixture in there. Love it. And then you can put our delicious beet rice meaty thing. Stuff. <laughs> that looks like store-bought ground meat to me. What I'm gonna add in is a little cornstarch slurry. That's gonna be like the edible glue of this Ooh. whole thing. And then we've got a little vegetable shortening. And then this, vital wheat gluten. Vital wheat gluten. It's very important to this recipe. Very vital, one would say. What is it? This is gonna give us that like chewy, meaty texture. Chewy. This is the one ingredient you really don't wanna skip on. So mix that up, okay. baby. Vital wheat gluten is a huge ingredient for a lot of meat substitutes. It's oh. what the big boys are using out there in the vegan market. 
starting to become a believer of my recipe. Listen, this is my recipe now. At this point, I've been doing all the work. Don't forget about our tofu. Oh, how could I forget? See, you remember things better when you do them yourself. Now that we've added the tofu, it kind of looks even more like ground beef because it's kind of like the fat, like his little white things. Very astute. And some more protein. Ice cream scoop. Love yes. It. Plop it right into your paw. Okay. And then we're gonna form a nice little patty. And then you're just gonna roll it up. And then when you get to the end, you just tuck the little ends under. Woo! And you got your good little boy. Which leads me to a trivia moment. How many average American showers does it take to produce one pound of beef? Americans also probably take really long showers. Fine. Working on that. <laughs> 10? 10? No, I don't know. 120. What? For one pound of beef. I know. I think it's a little bit tough when people feel like, oh, like I can't be vegan because I can't go all the way. But you can start small. Like you can start to incorporate meatless meals into your diet. I think that's the thing that scares people away is that there's such this misconception. It's like you have to be black. It's like black and white. Yeah. You have to be 100% vegan all the time yeah. or you're not vegan at all. Yeah. And I have a problem with people that are vegan, especially online, that are like, oh, she cheated. Yeah. Or, oh, she had an egg. Or like, oh, this. Now you're not it's vegan like, anymore. I think there's so many great benefits. And as long as we're like sharing about why it's so good, right. that is what you that's can huge. do. You can make a difference. The cricket has turned into the master. Jesus, the student becomes the teacher. <laughs> Wait, have a minute. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our patties and then we're gonna steam these bad okay. boys up. Interesting that you steam. It's the best way to cook the vital wheat gluten. Okay. Yeah. Good Toss job. that lid on there. Goodbye. So pick yourself a little friend. Okay. And then we're gonna just salt and pepper them. And we're just gonna cook these for like two minutes on each side. Look at this Yay. spread! Yay! So cute! So, we're gonna assemble our burgers. This is a vegan garlic aioli. Ooh. Click down there if you want that. Okay, these buns look so good too. What? These buns came to play. The heck? Okay, some lettuce. I love all the colors! Tomatoes and pickles. I'm a big pickle girl. And then of course we need a burger on there. Woo! That's a look monster! That. All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that was really, really good. It's crazy because it isn't falling apart like a lot of veggie burgers do. Mm -hmm. Obviously at Monty's, we have the Impossible Burger, which it's engineered to have a meaty taste. Mm -hmm. But to also get that same meaty experience from the ingredients we used, which was just vegetables and plants, really incredible. I would be 100 million percent satisfied eating this. Yay! All right, here we are. Woo! The moment of truth. We've got the classic In-N-Out Burger, which was your standard for a burger back yeah. in the day, right? Yeah. 10 for you. Back in the old meat eating days just a few months ago. I do know what this one tastes like well, and I'm trying not to eat meat, so oh. I'm not gonna take a bite, but I'm going to refresh my memory on the Monty's burger, though. Okay. Ooh, look at that. I have to say, this one does look a little more satisfying. Yeah. Just yeah. as good as I remembered. You like that one more <laughs> than I remember. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to this baby, our baby. Oh. Mmm, it is so, so good. They're so different, which is hard, because there's so much variety in both being vegan burgers. It definitely tastes homemade in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels light and fresh, even though it's still filling as a burger. Whereas this one, it's like an indulgent burger, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. And also, I mean, this Monty's burger uses the Impossible Burger. Yes. So you really get that meaty experience. So in comparison to the in and out burger. I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to say. Oh my God, Alex. I'm gonna rate this one an eight, and I'm gonna rate this one a nine. Yeah. All right, that's fair. I totally understand. If you're going for like the burger you remember, the in and out burger, that's this it. is it. That's it. This is it. Yeah. It's and shockingly that's the name close. Of the game. I'm sorry, mushrooms. Yeah, they'll forgive you, Please maybe. Forgive me. Maybe. <laughs> they hear you, you know. <laughs> they do. And you know, if you don't have a Monty's near you, I do encourage you to try out this burger. Make a weekend out of it. <laughs> get your kids, get your wife. <laughs> and make that burger because it is really tasty. Make it in bulk, freeze it, enjoy it throughout the week, throughout the month. Okay. If I can turn plant-based vegan, you can turn plant-based vegan. Alex, thanks again. This was so much fun. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below if there's anyone you want me to invite on to veganize something for, or if there's anything you want me to try to veganize, and I'll do my very best. I'll come back. I'm like a human trash can. You're a mushroom. Yeah, that's true. We love mushroom Alex. alien trash can. Great. This is 
some of the best macaroni cheese I've ever had in my life, hands down. I'm getting some like serial killer vibes off this, honestly. The way that you've all made these rows. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's your girl Merle, and today I'm gonna be having my friend Q on the show. Q loves mac and cheese, but he's lactose intolerant, so I know he suffers for it. I wanna prove to Q that there's a vegan version of mac and cheese that can satiate that need and that want that he has. So we're gonna go out there and we're gonna find the best vegan mac and cheese that we can in LA, and then I'm gonna bring him back here and we're gonna make our own homemade version. Then he's gonna see which one he likes more. So let's go get Q, what are we waiting for? Merle, what is up? Well, you know, I'm always up to something weird and vegan. I'm actually kind of nervous, because every time I do a video with you, it's something crazy. <laughs> this is actually not going to be like that. I have heard through the grapevine that uh, you love yourself some mac and cheese. Oh, shit. Yeah, I definitely love mac and cheese. My mom is the ultimate mac and cheese maker. It's like known in my city, like, if somebody's making mac and cheese for the party, my mom is going to make the mac and cheese. In your city? In the city. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's popping. It's like five cheeses in there. It's baked, has some burnt pieces on it. Oof. It's just so many layers to it that oh. makes it so good. Clearly, you love mac and cheese. You love oh, your mom's yes. mac and cheese. So today, I'm going to take you to Sage Vegan Bistro. Mm. And we're going to get some bomb mac and cheese. Rachel did a research day where she w drove around on the company's dime taste testing all the different vegan mac and cheeses that LA has to offer. And she said this one's the best. That's a pretty high bar we're setting here. I don't need it to, to be mm. better than your mom's. Okay. I want it to be comparable. How is that going to be possible? Like, what do you substitute? Listen to me, Q. Vegans are the MacGyvers <laughs> of the culinary world. Okay. We find a way. I mean, I'm open. I feel like a healthier way to eat mac and cheese is always a good thing. Sorry, mom, but I mean, like after like the fifth plate, you definitely start to feel like shit. But hey, <laughs> hey, it's a good shit. Love you, mom. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I want to know how Sage Vegan Bistro started. I want it somewhere that everybody is going to have something that they are familiar with and they feel comfortable eating, but it doesn't have any of the animal products in it. 80% of our guests are not vegan or vegetarian, so. I'm very excited about that because I believe it's a numbers game. I'm not about telling everybody they should be vegan. There is always going to be vegans and there's always going to be meat eaters. And to me, it's how can we get our global consumption of meat pared down to something that the planet can sustain. So almost everything that you're eating as far as produce was grown within 60 miles of here. For me, it's a big disconnect when people say, oh, I'm a vegan for the animals. I don't care if it's local or if it's a family own farm. To me, we have to care about the animals, the environment, and human beings. How do you make your macaroni look so not vegan? We use a mixture of a vegan cream cheese, diet cheese, mix that with nutritional yeast, melted together and then poured over the par cooked noodles and then I put the breadcrumbs on top with the follow your heart mozzarella and it gives you that crispy on top and gushy and delicious inside. When one little noodle starts to burn, that's, it. that's how you know it's ready to come out. I knew I could trust you. Okay. <laughs> I knew I could trust you. This looks like real cheese. Whoa, whoa. I completely forgot this was vegan. Oh shit, I should have said anything. Oh my, look at that. It smells good. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm in shock right now. I can't even look at you right now. This is so incredibly delicious. It's so creamy. Remember you're talking about layers? Yes. You got the crust, you got the goo. This is some of the best macaroni cheese I've ever had in my life, hands down. That's not a question. So I've set the bar very high. I'm regretting that a little bit now, but, 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 I'm gonna make it all from scratch. Okay, I like that. If it's gonna come out something like this or better, people, listen to your girl. Here we are in the kitchen. I'm gonna do my best to give you an even better mac and cheese version that you can make at home. I wanna believe in you. I do believe in you, but Sage was fine. I'm gonna rise to the occasion. Okay. I'm gonna exceed your expectations. Okay. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna roast yourself a little head of garlic. You're gonna cut the head off of your little garlic guy. Yeah. Just like a half an inch. So we're gonna add some oil. All right, we got that puppy all lubed up. And now we're gonna add some salt. <laughs> Can't resist sometimes. Oh, he's salt bay in the house. Goodbye now. Into the oven you will go. Just roast this for like 35 to 40 minutes. Okay. Fortunately. Planned ahead. We've got one done right here. This smells amazing. Like, I wish Ooh. I had some fries. All right, so you want this to be fork tender. Is this fork tender? 
Damn. She looks pretty tender to me. She tender. This is the fun part. Starting from like the bottom, you just have to push it out. Yeah, oh my. It's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. For Aria, I made a cashew milk to go with his chocolate chip cookies. Interesting. So we're gonna be doing the same kind of dealio here. Time out. Yeah. Did you just say that we're gonna use this cashew plus this garlic? to make cheese sauce. Listen, the cashew is a very powerful nut. It is fatty, it makes things creamy. Mm -hmm. And what about like the yellow cheesy look? Ah, uh, all in good time. Okay, Young okay. Man. okay. See these fatties, I soaked these for about four hours, so they're engorged right now with liquid, which makes them softer, gotcha. which is going to make them easier okay. to blend. Definitely. No, you just pull the whole thing off. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, I really am teaching you everything. So let's put the cashews in, you can put the garlic in. And then we got about three cups of water here, and then we're gonna blend it up so it's nice and smooth. Great. God damn. God. So this is looking really good. It's all formed together to this nice kind of milky situation we got going on. Yeah, that garlic is popping off in there, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> You're gonna put some oil on that pan right there. Put the panko breadcrumbs, you're all the way in. Nice. I'm all the way up. Paprika, add a nice little smoky flavor, and then of course our best friend, salt. All right, so we're gonna give this a quick little stir, yeah? Every 30 seconds or so, we'll zhuzh it up. So cute. I've heard through the grapevine and directly yeah. from you. <laughs> <laughs> directly from your mouth yeah. to my ears. That you are trying to incorporate a little bit more of a plant-based diet into your life. Is that yes. true? Yes, 100%. So I feel like once I've seen all the celebrities not eating this stuff, I knew. That was my time. <laughs> Are you that serious? was my time to change my ways. They know something we don't know. So at that point, I'm like, you know what, Q? Follow the celebs. Yeah, you know what? They, they do have the inside word. Going forward, I just don't want to eat that much red meat. And I feel like this would be a good move for me. Just because I'm doing it 100% doesn't mean mm -hmm. everyone has to do it 100%. Like, I agree. I think baby steps are just as important, so. Yeah, honestly, I feel like I'm killing it right now. Like, if this you is are... what being a chef would be. I'm getting some, like, serial killer vibes off this, honestly. The way that you've all made these rows. <laughs> <laughs> you can just move it around like this, you're like, it look nice for the tight, camera. my dearies. <laughs> That's the feeling I get from you. Now yeah, you okay. can transfer this to the bowl. And in the same beautiful pan, we're going to make our roux. We got two different kinds of fats over here. We got mm -hmm. vegan butter, and then a little bit of olive oil. Then classically some more garlic. You never have enough garlic. Honestly. <laughs> we're, it's, ex it's an exciting day. I know? love cooking. Sizzling it up. That's vegan butter, baby. A roux is equal parts fat and flour, and it's commonly used to thicken sauces, and that's what we want it to do for us here. Mix that all up. So ultimately what we want is for it to look like the consistency of wet sand. We're pretty close already. We're getting there. Do you cook a lot for yourself? I really do enjoy cooking. I'm meal prepping. You see this double dasking? I'm a cook. <laughs> now you've done such a great job here. I'm gonna add the cashew milk we made earlier. Keep stirring that until the roux is combined nicely with mm -hmm. our cashew milk, so it's nice and creamy. Let's add nutritional yeast, which okay. is gonna give it more of that like cheesy flavor that we obviously know and love. This is apple cider vinegar, uh, don't worry. When it all comes together, it's like a symphony. You can wash your dreadlocks in apple cider vinegar. Really? It gets out everything. Apple cider vinegar is a beautiful thing. Yeah. So that's turmeric, but that's gonna give us that yellowy, orange, cheesy oh, here look we go. color that you were asking for. We this is starting to look like it for sure. A little pepper. Pepper, fresh ground black pepper. And we're gonna add some salt. Now we're gonna turn the heat down to low and we're gonna let this bad boy simmer. And in the meantime, it's time for some vegan trivia. I'm like, what is it time for? <laughs> Tell me now. Hello and welcome to Vegan Trivia. According to a climate report from the EWG, cheese produces how many times more CO2 emissions than tofu? Two. Seven times. Like, no, that's crazy. That's a very crazy fact. I think a lot of the time people will equate beef with methane yes. emissions. Yeah. But if you think about it, dairy also, you're dealing with cows, right? You need cows yeah. to produce the milk. Yeah, cow farts. <laughs> it basically, yeah. Yeah. It all boils down to cow farts. Yeah, change the world one fart at a time. <laughs> That's the slogan the show needs. Now you might notice that our sauce is thickening up quite nicely. Most definitely. If for some reason it gets a little too thick, mm -hmm. you just add a little bit of water and that'll gotcha. loosen that puppy right back up. We got some elbow mac and cheese. It seems only appropriate for a mm -hmm. classic mm -hmm. mac. Ooh, look at that. This is definitely looking like what mac and cheese should look like. This looks so freaking creamy. Like we could stop this video right here and say yo. But we're not gonna do that. We're taking it beyond. 
We didn't go to the same direction. Try to evenly distribute as much as you can. I'm a perfectionist. Oh, right, I saw the way you were stirring earlier. Let's do it, why wait, you know? I'm hungry, man. Looky here. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. You gotta spoon it up because you're a professional. A professional spooner. <laughs> I wanna get every aspect of this macaroni and cheese. It's oh, game I time. I can't look, I can't look. That's good. Is it? Yes. It's not like a pull it and there's like something in the middle, but like it's macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I yeah. taste that garlic in here for sure. And I feel like it's a game changer. I think it has everything that you needed in a macaroni. All we're missing is, is that burnt piece. The burnt piece. I think now all we have left to do is for you to rank it. We've even prepared your mother's special recipe of mac and cheese. You guys called my mom? <laughs> Lovely lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're tight now. It's time for the moment of truth. Ooh. We have Dear Sweet Mother's mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, the gold standard, of course. Mm -hmm. We've got the sage mac and cheese that we had earlier today. Very solid. And then, of course, we have the homemade one that we just made. Yeah. You're not gonna rate your mother's because she's gonna win. Like, yeah, that's a on. 10. It's your mother, yeah. It's, that's a 10. Yeah. Damn. That took me right back to Thanksgiving. Let's move on before I cry. Yeah. <laughs> Sage is great. It visually looks a lot more like my mom's macaroni. Mm -hmm. They cook it a very similar way. This one is a much more like cheesy because they use the vegan cheese. Okay. But also vegan cheese is not readily available everywhere. Correct. So what I like about what we made today is that everything is natural. Anybody can make this recipe. This is definitely very creamy. The crumbles threw me off visually, mm -hmm. but tastes amazing. Good God, what are you gonna rate it? I need so, to know. This is a 10. This is a 7.5. This is gonna be an eight. Yay! Oh my god! <laughs> Yay! That's an eight. Yeah. Like I can see this with some collard greens. This is my favorite. Yeah, Nothing of is ever going to top that. Of course. But I feel like this is for a special occasion. I cannot eat this every week. I can eat this every month. I feel like for just every occasion when I want to make macaroni outside of holidays and mm -hmm. just you know, just a regular weekend type of thing. These options are definitely worth trying out. It's way more eco-friendly, way more health conscious. I'm 100% down to start going for vegan macaroni and cheese. Like, not a question. Yay. We did good today. We did great. Where you got it? Oh! oh! Well, thank you for watching. I hope this was fun and informative. Let us know in the comments below who you want to have on the show next so I can veganize something for them. Invisible maracas? Yeah. That's very exciting. Sushi is so good. I could eat it every single day. If you say all you can eat, my next word will be sushi. Mm. What do you think, Jasmine? <laughs> That's like your equivalent of wagging your tail, I feel. <laughs> hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Merle, and today we're gonna be doing Make It Vegan from Home. It might look a little bit different, but it's still gonna be totally fun, and we're gonna make it work. So today I'm gonna have my very good friend, Jasmine Pack, on the show, which is very exciting. You guys may know her as the producer from Giant Food Time on Bring Me. She's a huge foodie, and I happen to know that her favorite food is sushi. So today, I'm going to be sending her some sushi from my favorite vegan sushi spot. And then I'm gonna show her how to make her own homemade vegan sushi. And we'll see which one she likes the best. Ring, ring. Hey, Jasmine! Hey, how are you? Oh, it's so good to see your shiny face. I just wanna pinch your cheek. Yeah, pinch me, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> this is what this lockdown has done to us. <laughs> All right, Jasmine, straight up. You love sushi. Tell me, talk to me about how much you love sushi and why do you love sushi? Merle, it's so good. I put my face really close, so you know I mean serious <laughs> business. I can tell. If you say all you can eat, my next word will be sushi. All you can eat. Yes. No, you're supposed to say sushi. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> If you have had sugarfish in LA, it is the bomb.com. I could eat it every day, sometimes I do. If you've had their tuna roll, it's super soft, tender, supple. You can cut through it like butter. I also love the eel roll, the umami in it. I think it's a very unique flavor and you can't not have eel when you go get sushi. You're painting quite the picture for me here. We got a modern day Bob Ross. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so today we're gonna be trying some vegan sushi from Shojin, which is a 100% plant-based sushi place. I know what you're thinking, it's vegan and sushi, what is that? But listen, I think it's gonna blow you away, Jasmine. Oh, I, I am very excited because last time you made me fish and chips from celery root, it tasted just like it. Okay, likeness to fish, zero. <laughs> okay, okay, with the shade. <laughs> 
It was good, it just wasn't the same, you know? Funny you should say that. A little birdie tells me you've got a special delivery. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go eat. Okay, Jasmine, let me tell you a little bit about why I love shojin so much. Yeah, sell it to me. They pride themselves on using only the highest quality ingredients that are organic when possible, and they avoid refined sugar, table salt, and gluten. All right, Jasmine, so first we're gonna be trying their dynamite roll, which is one of their top selling items. Let's do it. This roll features spicy tofu, which is the tuna, and it also includes avocado, spicy mayo, and beet sauce. Cheers! Cheers. That's good. Holy shit. What I appreciate is the complexity of the flavors working together. And I know it's made with tofu, which I can actually taste, but I love tofu. I actually, I love this, I can't lie. It doesn't taste like fish to me either. It just tastes like really good sushi. I agree. Now we're gonna try their other most popular item, which is their baked crab cake hand roll. And this one has crab cake made out of enoki mushrooms, avocado, veganase, and a smoky sweet tamari sauce. This is good. Hmm. Sound like you're not buying it. I think it's because I have a very sensitive flavor palette and I love, love mushroom. So it doesn't even taste like crap to me. All I can taste is like, it's a delicious fried enoki mushroom sort of concoction. It's not fooling you, but it's delicious. Yes. I thought it was super good, but I don't think everyone has a vegan sushi spot near them. It's funny you should say that. I'm going to be teaching you how to make it out of your own kitchen. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's hope the mind stacks up to your expectations now that I've given you this delicious vegan sushi. I don't know how you're gonna be shoujin. Damn, don't spare my feelings. <laughs> okay, so as you know, shoujin used tofu to recreate the tuna in their rolls, but what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be using tomatoes. So we're using tomatoes to make tuna? Listen, I've got a plan here, okay? It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with our tomatoes is we're gonna take a sharp knife and we're going to make a little X incision on the bottom there. And then at the top, you're just gonna use the pointy tip of your knife and you're gonna core the tomatoes as well. We've got a pot of boiling water here. We're just gonna put our tomatoes right there in the boiling water for about 60 to 90 seconds. And then once you start to notice the skin peeling away from that little X on the bottom, you can transfer them with a spoon over to your ice bath. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with your tomatoes is you're gonna take them out of their ice bath, and then we're just gonna gently peel away the skins. It's really fun, it kinda reminds me of like when you put glue on your hands, you know? Oh yeah! All right, so now that you're all peeled to the bone, you're gonna take your tomatoes and you're gonna cut them into quarters. So you can just follow those X's you made on the bottom all the way through. Can you see where we're going with this sushi thing? A thousand percent. It really looks like tuna. All right, and then once you've got them all quartered, we're gonna take the seeds out. All right, I know this is a vegan show, but my cutting board is looking like a straight up crime scene. I feel like Dexter. But yeah, this looks gruesome. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got all of our tomatoes seeded, we want to make our marinade. And our marinade is going to consist of half a cup of low sodium soy sauce. And then we're gonna do half a cup of rice vinegar and half a cup of a neutral oil. It smells like sushi. We're cooking up miracles here, I'm feeling good. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon and a half of granulated sugar. And finally, to, to give it the real fishy kick, we're gonna put in a nori sheet. Remember when you made um, salmon out of carrots? I sure do, I'm proud of that recipe. If this one is as good as that one, I'll give up non-vegan sushi what? for a week. Okay, okay, I was <laughs> like, wait, what? And we're gonna mix her up, and we're gonna plop them right in there, and then we're gonna put these sleeping beauties in the fridge to marinate. All right, so Jasmine, we're not done yet. Now we're gonna make something that resembles the eel sushi that you said you like so much, using eggplant. Ah! Whoa, that was way more badass than mine. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take the tops off. The next step of this is gonna be to peel the entire eggplant, which I know you're thinking, oh, that's a lot of work, but listen, I got something to keep your mind busy while we're doing it. Oh yeah? I think it's time for some vegan trivia! <gasps> 70%. 
Yes, that's right. According to a report by Greenpeace, what is the biggest plastic polluter in our oceans today? I would say microplastics or plastic water bottles. <coughs> plastic bags. <coughs> Ugh. Discarded fishing gear. They estimate that 640,000 tons of commercial fishing lines, gear, nets, traps, and pots are discarded into the ocean every single year, which is the equivalent weight of 55,000 double-decker buses every single year in our oceans. And that's just commercial, so that doesn't even include private. Plastic in our oceans isn't the only problem with fishing. There's also overfishing and, of course, bycatch. Bycatch basically means that we're accidentally catching other marine life and disturbing marine ecosystems while we're trying to get the fish we want to eat. Oh my god. Now it doesn't even matter if this tastes good. I'm going to make it anyway. Okay, so first we're going to cut our eggplant right in half like so. So we've got two pieces here. And then with each half, we're going to cut them into about one third inch slices. What is a third of an inch? Ooh, cute. All right, so now you've got your slices and I'm going to lay down a cloth. Better to use a cloth or a reusable one if you can. So I'm going to lay out my slices and I'm going to salt the first side and then I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to salt the other side as well. Okay, I'll salt it. Good work, Jasmine. We're gonna let these sit here for about 30 minutes, and in the meantime, we're gonna preheat our ovens to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 190 degrees Celsius. Are you ready for this? Ready! Okay, great. All right, now for our sauce, we're gonna use a third of a cup of sake, a third of a cup of maple syrup, a half a cup of mirin, and then a half a cup of more low sodium soy sauce. So we're gonna mix this up until it's very well blended. Okay, so now this is simmering. And after about 20 or 25 minutes, we will take this off the heat once it is reduced by about half. Okay, so now we just took our sauce off of the stove and we have let it cool down a bit. And finally, we're going to pat our eggplants dry. And then we're gonna cut these like planks into fourths. If you have a smaller one, then you can cut it into thirds. And then you're gonna transfer it to your baking mat. Now that we have it all evenly spread out nicely on the mat, we're gonna take about a quarter of our mixture and we're gonna evenly spread it over all of our pieces. Then we're gonna flip them and do the same thing with another quarter of the mixture on the other side. If you find that it's insanely tedious to flip each individual piece like I've decided it is, you can just really, once you got the glaze on there, mix them around like a roller skate. A roller skate? <laughs> like a roller <laughs> skate. <laughs> like a roller skating rink. All right, we're gonna pop these in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna use the rest of our sauce and cover them one more time and then pop them back in the oven again for 10 more minutes. We've done a lot today, it's been a packed day, but now we've reached the final stage, it's time to actually build these little sushi friends. For those of you who don't know, a little tip is to wet your hands a bit first before you're handling the sushi rice, cause, oh, she gets sticky, all right. She gets real sticky. So we're gonna form it into a little oblong shape. I think I wet my hands too much, now it's falling apart. <laughs> No. Here's another a hot tip. If you want to keep your little tomato to stick on the top better, put a little, little teeny dot of wasabi on there. Really small, especially if you don't like spice because that's got a kick and a half to it. Then we're gonna pop our vegan tuna on top. Now we're gonna take our seaweed and we're gonna wrap it in a little package of love. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna take this little guy to prom with me. Look at it, it's cute! <laughs> I'm so excited about this, wow. All right, I'm moving on to my second sushi slab. This looks like a good one. You have been chosen as tribute. And then we're gonna brush just a little bit of our leftover sauce on top. Now I'm gonna wrap her up. Oh, they are cute, they're little friends. Okay, so the moment of truth has arrived. Jasmine, you've got all three of your sushi options there. You've got your favorite sushi, the tried and true, the 10 in your book from Sugarfish. And then you've got the ones that we got from Shoujin earlier today. And then of course you have our homemade versions that we just made. I'm so excited! Okay, so Jasmine, I'm gonna have you go ahead and try your Sugarfish sushi first. Don't mind if I do. Mm. <laughs> That's like your equivalent of wagging your tail, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Sugarfish never lets me down. I mean, come on, eel is unmatched. I'm nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and try the shoujin again. Mmm. 
I mean, the spicy tuna roll, like I said earlier, can still taste the tofu, but it's also reminiscent of spicy tuna and still reminds me of the sushi experience. Okay, what are we trying first? I'm gonna do the tomato one. Thoughts, feelings? Okay, visually, gorgeous. Experience, amazing. Taste, impeccable, but not tuna. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's not tuna, but you don't think it tastes anything like tuna? No. <laughs> There, there's a bite to the tomato that the tuna from Sugarfish doesn't have. What I love about Sugarfish tuna is that it's super soft and melts like butter. The tomato tuna, I enjoy it for what it is. I don't think it tastes exactly like tuna, but I would feel like I had a sushi experience. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Now why don't you try the eel? Wow, okay. Feels like an eel. No. <laughs> Aren't they like slimy? The eggplant eel is really good. I could put each one of those over sushi rice as a bowl and just scarf it down. The experience of eating the eggplant eel is very similar to eating eel because it looks like it. Like visually, it's just there. Also, the sauce is on point. Yay, okay, I'm feeling a little more confident now. Okay, it's time for you to pick. Just walk me through what you're thinking about both of your options here. The shoujin was super good. I'm super happy that you introduced it to me. While I thought the spicy tuna was amazing, I wasn't in love with the imitation crab roll and I could still taste the tofu in the spicy tuna roll. For the ones we made today, I could taste the tomato in the tuna, but the eggplant eel sauce, life-changing. So what are you gonna rate these two? Shoujin, taking everything into account, I give it an eight. Oh, wow. And for the ones we made today, I give it a... Seven point seven six. No, no! <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have encouraged you to be honest. <laughs> It's respectable and I understand. I thought shojins were incredible also. Okay, but I need to clarify, okay? Even though I gave shojin a higher number, I still like the eggplant eel we made today more than I do the imitation crab roll from shojin. Interesting, so you just like the tofu one so much from shojin, that was the one that like threw you over the edge. Yeah, it's so innovative, so many different flavors. This is healthy, there's protein, it's complex. What's not to love about it? I don't feel like there's a need to imitate the food. So if it's an imitation crab roll, why not just call it the fried enoki hand roll? Because I would be able to appreciate it for what it is. And the ones we made today, if you just called it marinated tomato. You wouldn't have ordered it. I would have enjoyed it. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I think that's a really good comment about like innovation over imitation. And I think a lot of people that aren't vegan can resonate, that will resonate with them. Overall though, the ones we made today were absolutely delicious. I would not mind swapping these out a couple times a month just to reduce my sushi intake. Hey, I'm glad you had fun. And honestly, thank you so much for being on the show. You're such a treat every single time I talk to you. Thanks for having me. I learned so much. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anybody you'd like me to have on the show to try to veganize their favorite dish, or if there's a certain dish that you would like to see me make vegan, let us know in the comments below. Bye. You want me to give you a couple minutes? I'm happy to. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle, and we're back with yet another episode of Make It Vegan From Home. Today I'm gonna to be having one of my favorite people on the show, I'm super excited, my very good friend Joyce. You may know Joyce from her Zero Waste series with Ari, or perhaps you saw her meddling in my love life and setting me up on a blind date with Aria back in the day. Joyce has told me a few times that one of her very favorite foods is a fried chicken sandwich. So today I'm gonna to be sending her what I think is the best vegan fried chicken sandwich in all of LA, and then I'm gonna show her how to make a homemade version for herself. And then she's gotta pick which one she likes the most. Let's go call Joyce. Joyce! My baby! <laughs> are you excited or are you a little nervous? Are you a little skeptical? You know me, I'm a Caribbean woman. I respect people's lifestyles. But my favorite food is meat. Just meat in general, four letters. Any kind of form. I'm even talking about like bull's ears or something. All right, I feel the same way. I feel, well, not about the meat, but I feel like <laughs> I need to respect what people love to eat too. So we're gonna meet in the middle with a little compromise today. I know you've told me like one of your favorite foods is a good fried chicken sandwich, right? Yes. 
from what I remember, you were saying that Honey Kettle is the place where you find literally the best fried chicken sandwich in all of LA. Why do you say that? It's the flavor, the seasoning, the bread is slightly sweet, but not like too sweet like some other places. The way the, the crispiness and the well-cooked seasoned chicken breast with a thick fry and honey mustard. You trying to turn me right now, Joyce? I've been vegan for a while, but that sounds good. <laughs> Honestly, your vegan food is fire, so I actually have a lot of faith in you. Oh my gosh, I love the confidence. I'm not used to it. <laughs> I respect your love for a fried chicken sandwich so I want to introduce you to the best vegan fried chicken sandwich in LA and it's from a place called Doomies. I've heard of that place. I've heard of that place. I think I hear a, a knocking at your door. There might be a special delivery for you. All right, you ready for this? You excited over there, Joyce? I'm excited to try this vegan chicken sandwich. I like your attitude. This is from Doomies. Doomies is an all vegan comfort food place. So they've got everything from chili cheese fries to breakfast items. And what we're gonna be trying today is their number one top selling item, the crispy chicken sandwich. Ooh. All right, cheers. Mm. Mm. You can be honest with me, Joyce. What do you think? Mm. This is probably one of the most delicious chicken sandwiches. Oh my God. That has ever been vegan. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, ever? What I really like about this chicken sandwich is the texture, the flavor, the crispiness of the fried part. Overall, like I could taste the hint of tofu, but it definitely still has that flavor and that richness that I like in a chicken sandwich and the heftiness. I love a hefty, thick queen. I'm a thick queen. This is a thick queen. So I'm happy with this. Beautiful description. So Merle, how am I supposed to get Doomies if I don't live near Doomies? I got I got something good whipping up in my brain for you. I think I'm gonna find a way to satiate the need. Are you ready? Absolutely not. Oh. If I can do it, I fully believe that you can do it. You're too kind to me, Merle. So Doomies uses a patty that is made from soy, wheat, and pea protein. But today, we are gonna be using mushrooms. I dropped the mushroom. <laughs> Your mushroom just took a dive, huh? Ah! It literally <laughs> fell apart. So these are my talkie mushrooms, but they're also called hen of the woods because they look like cute little fluffy hens. I mean, yours just skedaddled right off the old cooking board. Cutting board? That's what it's called. It definitely did. I'm a big fan. They're really adorable. They look like a pretty little flower. Sure, or a pretty little flower, yes. Okay, so we've got our oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 200 degrees Celsius. Essentially, we have our baking sheet here prepared with a silicone mat. Joyce, you love to try to be zero waste. So, you know, if you have that, great. If you just have parchment paper, that works too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna trim just the bottom half inch, but we wanna maintain the cluster on top. You basically just trim off the little edge there that's dirty and leave the rest. We love a dirty queen. <laughs> we sure do. Okay, I cut it. So Joyce, talk to me about your relationship with mushrooms. I think my relationship with mushrooms are a lot like my relationship with men. I think at first, you know, I was very into it and then we had a phase where I had mushrooms that were a little too old at a birthday party and I my brains out. But years have passed <laughs> and now we're working on our issues together to really just be the best relationship that we could be, you know? <laughs> Gorgeous. I mean, poetically put, honestly. We're taking your relationship to the next level today. All right, now what we're gonna do is take those cute little mushroom friends and put them on your baking sheet. Make sure they're nice and spread out. And then we wanna just spray her down like she's getting ready for a Victoria's Secret photo shoot on both sides. Okay, so I just spray these hoes? Yeah, get them. And then after you've sprayed them all, we're gonna add a, a little pinch of salt across the board just to salt these, salt these bad boys up. You know I like it well seasoned. Yep. So now we're just gonna pop them in the oven for like 20 minutes and that's it, we just wait. You can watch my booty. <laughs> All right, now we got our little chicky poos out of the oven. They're looking pretty crispy on my end. What about you? Oh, they're looking very crispy, chef. Ready for the crisp. All right, so now we're gonna make our marinade. So you got your big old Tupperware bucket, whatever you're using. We're gonna start with three cups of almond milk. Great. And now one and a quarter cups of pickle brine. Pickle. I just know this song about a pickle. Oh, okay. Now we're gonna add a teaspoon of hot sauce. Make sure you get all that hot sauce. I got hot sauce in my bag, swag. 
And once you got your hot sauce in there, we're gonna do one tablespoon of salt. And then you know what to do after that. You're just gonna mix it up. Get some wrist action going. Wrist action? Yes. Keep it loose. Oh yay, mix it, mix it, mix it up. All right, now toss your little chickies in, the, in their new little bath. We're gonna let these marinate for 90 minutes, but we want you to like kind of scoop around the marinade every like 30 minutes or so, just to make sure it's even. Amazing, I could use my zero waste covering. Look at you go, Joyce, you're doing the damn thing. You know it's a journey, not a destination. We're gonna just let these marinate at room temperature, so you're not putting it in the fridge. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make a quick little slaw. So we're gonna do some carrot, some purple cabbage, a half a teaspoon of sugar, and then two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, which probably will go all over the place, and that's all right. And then a tablespoon of salt. Okay, sorry, a teaspoon of salt. If it was a tablespoon, this would be the saltiest slaw I've ever had. Did you know that coleslaw is my most hated food? Most hated food. Merle, I love you so much that I will fight the forces <laughs> that tell me not to eat this coleslaw. Yes, that's it. Look to the darkness within. Bring some light in there. <laughs> all right, when that's all mixed up, we're gonna move on to make the vegan aioli. I see aioli everywhere. I was like, this is just fancy white people mayonnaise. It's honestly just seasoned mayonnaise. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start off with a third of a cup of some vegan mayonnaise. And then once you got that in there, we're gonna add one teaspoon of garlic. Look at me, mom, I'm a chef. We're gonna add one tablespoon of brown mustard. Salt to taste and hot sauce to taste. All right, now it's time for us to bread our mushrooms. Bread me, daddy. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, these little chickies have been marinating for 90 minutes now. It's time to bread, baby, you ready? I love a good bread. Uh. <laughs> Great. Get uh, two cups of flour, if you could, and then we're gonna do a quarter cup of cornstarch. Here we go. Two tablespoons of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of paprika. For coloring. My mother always put paprika in her cooking because she said Haitians only eat the food when it's brown. Interesting. What's your favorite thing to cook with your mom? Rice. Why is that? Because she's so good at it. Okay. And I know it's like such like a basic thing, but my mom like seasons it and like it just has this really great flavor and it's just it's my go-to. And then you're gonna do two teaspoons of cayenne. Finally, one teaspoon of black pepper. Now you're gonna just mix all that together. And we're gonna do a little dance here with the mushrooms, okay? We're gonna take them out of the marinade. We're gonna put them in the breading. We're gonna put them back in the marinade. We're gonna put them back in the breading. And then we're gonna put them on your baking sheet. Wow, okay, let me make space on my deluxe island that isn't a bar full of alcoholic drinks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joyce, it's time for vegan trivia. Ooh. What percentage of chicken in the U.S. is factory farmed? 80%. 80% you say, a solid guess. However, it is in fact 99.9%. So wait, all these farm grown chicken that I get is a lie? That's good marketing, Joyce. That's real good marketing. Uh. The scammers are everywhere, man, especially in this industry. So not only is factory farming incredibly cruel to the animals and the workers, but the unsanitary living conditions of the animals creates a breeding ground for disease that puts us all at risk for more pandemics. I don't know about you, but I do not want more pandemics. No, no. Many factory farmed animals are treated with antibiotics to prevent them from getting sick. However, when that bacteria evolves and mutates, the antibiotics can become ineffective, which puts humans at risk to become unable to fight resistant infections. Oh gosh. I know, it's kind of scary, right? I feel like that's the kind of stuff you don't normally hear about. Like, I feel like a lot of people when they're like talking about like the welfare of the animals, but you don't always think about like global health. Yeah. Listen. I know I can't get everyone to go completely vegan. So if you are going to eat chicken and we wanna keep farms small and humane, reducing your meat consumption can help that a lot. Ugh, preach pasta. That's my soapbox. I love it. Okay, Joyce, it's that special time of the episode where we have to work with hot oil. Boo! Yay. <laughs> so we're gonna fry our breaded mushrooms I'm gonna lower mine in extra gently into the very, very hot, hot, hot oil. And then we just wanna let these fry for about two minutes on either side until they're golden brown. 
Ah! Ah! It's so hot. <laughs> I know it's so scary. <laughs> Oh, nice! Wow. That looks awesome. And then when you're gonna transfer it over to a baking sheet or a plate covered in paper towels, how's it looking? Are you are you proud with your end result over there? Yeah, for one of them, it's gonna be a chicken nugget sandwich, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so the last thing we're gonna do here is quickly salt our little chicken mushroom thingies, and then we're gonna assemble. Assembly! Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, I'm gonna smear some of this aioli right down on my bun, it's however much you want. I'm gonna add some pickles on there, and then find your prettiest little princess that you wanna eat first. I'm gonna go for this little, this little lady. All right, now the coleslaw. Now let's be real, you don't like coleslaw, and I don't know how much of a coleslaw this really even is. It's not cold, but it's a slaw. <laughs> for sure. So add as much as you want on there. You know, it just looks pretty. It'll add a nice crunch. Mm-hmm. I love a good crunch, don't you? You know I do. And then I'm gonna top the old top hat right on there. Damn, that is a stacked sandwich right now. What a journey we've been on together. In front of you right now, you have your favorite fried chicken sandwich from Honey Kettle. You've got the one we ordered earlier from Doomies. And then of course, you have our homemade version that we just made together. I'm gonna have you try the Honey Kettle one that you know and love, just to remember what your idea of a 10 is. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, Honey Kettle. Do you want me to give you a couple minutes? I'm happy to. Mm, 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 mm. So would you say that's your idea of like a 10? Definitely. So next, go ahead and take a bite of that Doomy sandwich from earlier just to remind yourself what that one tastes like. She's thicker than the honey kettle, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that one packs a wallop. What I love about the Doomy's one is that it has the crispiness, the thickness, and it's not trying to taste like a chicken sandwich, and therefore it makes it like almost better than a lot of the originals. All right, interesting. And then finally, it's time for us to try the homemade version that we made together. I'm gonna do this with you. Okay, I'm excited. All right, are you ready? Yes, wow, this is a messy one. All right, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my God. That that's good. <laughs> that's Sorry. Flat. That's good. This actually tastes really good. I really like the crispiness. The seasoning's not too intense. You might have made me a vegan coleslaw queen because this is the best coleslaw I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> it's spicy. It's sweet. This is really good. Like, I'm actually like shook. I know it's time to make the final choice, but I mean, the Doomies has the fullness, the crispiness, and the mayo. I mean, Doomies definitely hit all the marks of a great chicken sandwich. But that homemade chicken sandwich was an underdog that came for the edges. I'm talking about not only crispy, not only well seasoned, but has the spice that a good chicken sandwich needs. But I think I've come to my final decision. I'm scared! I rate Doomies an eight out of 10. Oh man, that's a very good rating. I rate the chicken sandwich A 9.5. <laughs> Yay! And the reason why I did that was because the Doomies is so heavy. But this one, the texture of the mushroom is really close. It definitely has that push and pull of eating meat. The coleslaw with the hot sauce really made it the, the big contender. We love a plot twist. The slaw came through in the, the end. The slaw came through for the edges. Oh my gosh, Joyce, thank you. I mean, I really, really appreciate you being so open-minded. Of course, I love you so much, Merle. You're amazing, and anytime cooking with you, I know it's gonna be a blast. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching today. Please let us know in the comments below if there's anyone you'd like us to bring onto the show, or if there's a specific dish you would like me to make vegan. Bye! Bye.